There's a blue spark. There's a blue ember. I can't wait for the blue fire. Hi, this is the Blue Ember and it's a pretty good looking mic. It's a very nice thin body. It's solid as hell. It's, um, it's more heavy than I would have thought. The grill is pretty solid up the top there. But what I do like about this is the size. It's so narrow. It comes with a mount, no case, but it's a cardioid microphone. It's a rather nice sort of silvery blue type colour. I quite like the look of it, although with the silver around here, if you're going to put this in front of lights, it could pick up lights, I think. Be a bit, yeah, a bit, a bit, a bit leery sometimes, a bit of a flash. But um, it's a rather good looking mic and it's the sort of thing that if you're making a video or something, you might want to have in the, in the shop because it looks pretty good, actually. It's a condenser mic. It takes 48 volts phantom power. And when you look at it, you think that you would handhold it or something and talk into it that way. But in actual fact, you talk into it like a, a, a studio microphone on the side. Blue don't actually produce a frequency response graph for this. But from what I've seen, it looks pretty good around the mid range where your voice is. There's a little wiggle at the top there. There's a bit of a wiggle and there's a roll off in the bass. I think it goes down to about 38 hertz and it goes up to 20. So it's almost a full range, 20 to 20, not quite there. But from what they've quoted, it's a very sensitive microphone at 12 millivolts. On top of that, the output impedance is pretty low as well at 40 ohms. So it's gonna give a nice healthy signal. To be honest, the first thing that strikes you when this thing comes out of the box is first how it looks because it's pretty nice looking. And secondly, the weight. It's actually quite a weighty microphone and you've just you're just so tempted to talk into that end of it but it's, it's wrong you've got to talk into the side. This is the sound of the blue ember from the front at close quarters this is how you probably use this in a studio and the best thing is is if you haven't got a, a protection over the top or a, a thing in front of it is to not talk straight directly into it but talk past it and if you talk past it that way you can avoid the plosives. I think this is a little bit prone to plosives if you look straight at it so I'll try that if I say plosives right in front of it, there the words the word plosives, 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 that's probably popping away. But this is the sound from the front. This is the sound from the side. This is the sound from the rear. This is the sound from the side. And this is the sound from the front. Be very careful not to speak into the top of the microphone, because if you do, that's what it's going to sound like if you talk into the top end of the microphone. It's not a top address. It's definitely a side address. Now, the other thing you might want to do is to get this thing out of range. So I'm going to just take it further away. Now, I've got the uh, microphone out of sight of the camera. And so it's now about three feet away from me. And that's the microphone from the front when it's held further away. And whether this can be used indoors at a distance, I'm not quite sure because if it's quiet, you might be aware of a little bit of self noise. So that's from the front. And just to test the rejection at further away, there's the side. That's the side of the microphone. There's the rear of the microphone. And now it possibly is picking up um, reverberations and things from the, the, the wall in front of me. And I'll come back to the front again. So that's the sound. Again, I've got to reiterate, don't talk into the top end of the microphone, because if you do, that's what it's going to sound like if you're talking to the top end. So that's the sound of the blue ember, at a distance of about two to three feet, between two and three feet. So now you've heard what it sounds like, I'm just going to go through just a few what I regard as negatives. I mean, you've got to bear in mind this is about £100, I think. It retails £1,900 or so. Um, so it's a cheap microphone, a very cheap intro microphone, I think, for studio people who want to use this in a studio. Fantastic. First thing is, it doesn't have a pop filter. It doesn't come with it. So you need to really, I think you would need to put something on the top of that, especially if you want to use it close up, because it can pick up um, plosives quite easily quite easily. Another thing I think they could have changed was this mounting system. This is a, it's not cushioned whatsoever. It's got a nice connection here. It's, this is really, really good because it's nice and big so you can get a good grip on it, but there's no cushioning. So because there's no cushioning, if you have that attached to a stand and you touch the stand, it's going to go straight through to the mic body. So, you know, you, it really needs something to cushion it if you want to um, use it in a studio. Otherwise, you've got to be careful not to touch the, either the table or the stand or whatever. The, the other thing is, though, because this microphone is so thin, I don't think it would actually be that easy to get something to actually fit it. 
So just to finish, I think this is actually a very, very nice mic, especially considering the price. £100 for a microphone like this is a great price. It looks good. You could get it nice and close and keep it on shot and it wouldn't offend anyone. Um, I, I wouldn't mind having that in shot. It's, it's a nice looking microphone. It's got a fairly decent sound and it compares really well actually with something like the Audio-Technica 2020. In fact, actually, I think this is a little bit quieter. So I think this is a great value microphone and well worth trying out if you're looking for a studio microphone to use in your home. I hope this was useful to you and I hope to see you next time. Please subscribe. Cheers for now.